All right. Are you ready for this? Because I don't know if I even am. This is a lot. And so anyways, this is how to decode a QR code by hand. Now, I like the QR code better than I like the data matrix code until I try to decode both of them. And the data matrix is a lot easier. The QR code is actually a beast to decode. Anyhow, this is your standard QR code right here. And this one specifically says Robomatics, my YouTube name. <clears throat> so now the first piece you're going to notice about a QR code is these giant uh, black squares here. And those are actually the finder pattern, what your phone or barcode scanner would use to find the QR code with. Uh, now bigger sizes of these have a another one that fits right about here. That's a smaller size. It's a, These are a 3x3 three three dot. This one would be a 1x1 one, a one one with a board around itself as well. But I'm going to show you the basic, uh, very simple, very easy uh, QR code decoding. I, I, I might try to do that one later. But anyhow, continuing on. Um, from this corner of this top left box finder pattern to the top uh, right of the lower left finder pattern, man, I think through these things, is uh, the timing. And the timing is the same up here as well between these two. And uh, f similarly, for your phone or barcode scanner, it would look to see how many black to white changes are between uh, these finder patterns, therefore telling it how big uh, each of these little cells are within the data or the QR code. So let's continue on to the formatting of how the QR code looks. So now this looks crazy. But you only need to remember like one thing when you're looking at this. Uh, of course, we have our finder patterns, and I've marked the timing codes in purple. And um, let's see, the red here is your error correction, and you got error correction here as well. This is actually a, uh, a copy from here to here and here to here. And then the green is something called the mask pattern. And to get to that in a minute finish with this stuff. The yellow is more formatting crap that you don't need to worry about. And then the orange is the space between the finder patterns and the rest of the barcode. I just wanted to fill it in so it didn't get confused when looking at the actual data. And there's this one blue thing here that's like for um, uh, the error correction stuff. We, we, we don't care about it because we're not going to look at the error correction whatever. And then there is always a black dot right there. I've colored it purple just so they don't get confused again. So continuing on, the mask is actually very important to decoding a QR code. And uh, so in our QR code, we have this dot, copy over up here, is over here. So if we come back up to our real black and white QR code, this is the third dot in two down from the black uh, finder pattern. So our one, two, three, dot in, two down, right there. So we have black, white, white. So that's why I have dark green, light green, light green. And this indicates our finder pattern. And why is it copied down here? Well, just in case your QR code gets ripped somehow, or torn, or messed up, or something like that, it has actually two spots that your finder can look for to figure out what the, fi what the pattern is. Now, let's go to Wikipedia here, and let's type in Wikipedia QR code, and let's go there. Now, there is actually quite a few patterns to the QR code, uh, as far as masking goes, and I'll show you what that means here in a second once I can find it. Here we are. The masking pattern is this crazy, awful pattern that uh, pretty much inverts the data area of the QR code as so that uh, the data doesn't come across looking uh, blank in some regions or pure black in some regions or even looking like the finder pattern itself. What the mask purpose is is to take that data area and just mix it up and really you're going to figure it out either way because you have the mask pattern to tell you how it was mixed up so you can demix it up. Now to do this by hand is kind of crazy so I've, I've 
pulled together uh, this to show you how that works. So remember now we have a like a one to give a black, then a white, then a white for this one. So going to our finder patterns, we have this guy right here, which is every other line is inverted. And so knowing that, I have taken every other line uh, starting at the bottom here and gone up and inverted uh, or drawn the mask out as every other line. Now the only exception to this rule is right here it's not you know every other every other then every other because this is our timing pattern it just skips over that and then every other every other every other okay so now we got that covered this is our mask that we're working with so now how do we take this crazy data here and demask it well if you're gonna do it by hand like I'm trying to teach you here's how I've done that what I've got is my mask pattern here and then I've taken my data and copied it in to uh, the, the picture that I've drawn so far. So really this is just to ignore, oh, this should actually be purple. Here we are, purple. <laughs> Don't want to get that confused, that's why I made it purple. So anyways, this is our data and this is our mask. And superimposing our mask over or underneath our data, really, it comes out looking like this where the gray is the mask regions that are to be inverted and the black is the data that is actually there for the QR code. And so what I've done to invert these is basically coming down here, now this looks crazy but don't get scared, is I've taken uh, the gray area here and I went through to every black area and cleared it out. So if they come across here we go gray, 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 black, I went gray, 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 white. You know, I just went down the line, and every time I saw a black within a gray row, I just inverted it so it disappeared. This is actually supposed to be gray there. I'm confusing myself. It's terrible. Okay. <clears throat> Continuing on. So now I have every uh, black in a gray area cleared to white. Now I can come through and turn every gray area in these gray rows into black. So now continuing on down uh, from the row we were at before here it was gray, I turned it black, this one was gray, I turned it black, this one was gray, I turned it black, and left the whites as whites. So therefore now we have a re-unmasked uh, QR code uh, without the mask in it, of course. All right. So now we have something that we can actually start decoding by hand now that the mask is out of there. And this is why the QR code is so much more awful than the data matrix. By the way, I have videos on the data matrix as well, so check those out too. Let's get to decoding this sucker. All right, so the first thing you got to do when decoding this guy after masking it is we got to figure out two things. And those are given to us at the lower left portion of lower right, sorry, lower right portion of our barcode. And we have here uh, the encoding and we have the length. Now uh, the encoding is going to tell us how the, the QR code is encoded, be it numeric, alphanumeric, binary, and then I think there's like eight other beyond that different types of crazy encoding. Now your standard encoding types that you would think of uh, where it has like capital and lowercase letters, something that would contain like a, a web page address, that would be binary encoding. And so, if we go back to uh, our good friend Wikipedia here, and we go to encoding modes, we're looking for byte encoding, which is 8 bits per character, as you would figure to be. Alphanumeric, as you would think this would be. Alphanumeric, I think, is, uh, yeah, it just gives pretty much uh, only capital letters and some punctuation. So uh, lowercase isn't included with this, so I know it's not going to be alphanumeric. I know it's going to be byte encoding, which is using ASCII. And I was totally wrong. There isn't a There's like five other. And then I'll show you this later. So continuing on here, um, I'm looking for 0010. Okay, so because one, two, four, eight, can, thinking through, you know, kind of a binary type pattern, zero, zero, one, zero, 
So if we come back to this guy, 0, 0, actually because it's binary starts from this side, 0, 0, 1, 0. So now we know it's byte encoded. Uh, something else to say to that effect, I took this uh, Robomatix barcode here from uh, qrcode.kwa.com, which is a, a good website you can use to make um, data matrices or uh, even QR, QR codes in data matrices from. So uh, they use this type of encoding and then they use this type of masking. You can have who knows what mask with who knows what encoding on it when you get a barcode. So uh, be careful because this is only one example of which. Continuing on, this is our length. And Robomatix is 10 characters long. R-O-B-O-M-A-T-I-C-S. Robomatix. So therefore, 8 plus 2 is 10. So I know my length of characters are 10. So now, how do I know how these bytes are flowing? Well, <laughs> Wikipedia told me. Anyhow, let me show you how they actually flow here. This is kind of a, a copy over from what Wikipedia already shows somewhere. Uh, forget it. I don't know where they showed it. Anyhow, this is uh, going the encoding, four bits there. Then I have my length, and then I have my next one, next one, and then this wraps around down, 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 then wraps around, goes up, 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 then down, 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 down. And then this is special because this is our end character. And this is what I was referring to down with uh, the encoding here. Where a 0, 0, 0 in the 4-bit chunk means end of message. We already knew it was the end of message because length already told us there was 10. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, end of, end of uh, string. Now what about the rest of this crap that goes up, goes through there, comes back around, goes down, goes through there, comes up, and wraps around, goes around, goes around, goes around, and down and finishes there. What about the rest of these things? Well, those are the error encoding crap. And you just don't want to mess with the error encoding crap unless you are ridiculously smart and can figure that kind of stuff out. And so I've laid this out in a more kind of uh, easier to read pattern or diagram here where we have our encoding, our length, the capital R, the O, B, O, M, A, T, I, C, S, the end of message, and then error correction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, so that's how it's going to look. So how do we get those things? How do I know that this is a capital R? How do I know that this is an O? Well, let me show you how I came to that conclusion. Coming down here to our next position, I'm going to show you how the bits are all laid out. Now the bits in a QR code are just crazy. Uh, but if you can, remember this uh, relatively simple zigzag pattern. Uh, let me show you back in Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a, a great little diagram for this as well, where it shows you that the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's if the pattern is going upwards. And then here, ah, there it was. That's the thing I was looking for earlier. It shows the wraparound thing that's going through here. So you know which direction each uh, byte is going. You can see here um, that the, say for their example, the w of www.wikipedia.org is going up. So we know that going up is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. However, they kind of backwards to as you would think of a, a bit in a byte they say one is the most significant bit so in the byte one would be 128 and then 64 then 32 16 8 4 2 and 1 so kind of thinking downwards if you can starting here at our encoding we go 8 4 2 1 because it's only four four bits long. But the next one is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So if you can think of this zigzag pattern right to left and then uh, continue zigzagging to get to the top. Now the top and the bottom, these, these sideways bytes act slightly different, whereas they, uh, if we were to go up the pattern here, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, and then continuing that same pattern, 128, 64, 32, 16, 
Now we can think about it as if we are now going left to right, the same zigzag pattern. Uh, so we get 8, 4, 2, 1. And then, uh, I'm sorry, this is, this is still right to left, isn't it? My mistake. Anyhow, so right to left, 8, 4, 2, 1, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. You can see it's backwards of the up direction versus the down direction. Really crazy stuff, isn't it? Now you can always uh, reference Wikipedia to, you know, refigure this out. Or, you know, you can always come back to this video and watch it a hundred times. I wouldn't mind that at all. Anyways, continuing, let's figure out what these bytes mean. Now this is where the, uh, this is where it really comes into play of what's what here. So looking, we know this is our encoding byte, or our encoding bits, it's not a full byte. And this is our length byte. And so the first byte to actually start after that is right here. And so we're looking to see which one of these are filled out. And you can see the dark gray areas here are the actual uh, unmasked bits that we've pulled out. So it's 64, 16, and 2 equals a total of 82. Now if I go to an ASCII chart, 82 is right here. And 82 coming across my ASCII chart is a capital R. <laughs> oh, look at that. We actually have real what we expect data. Very cool. So now coming over to the next one, uh, I have Let's see, 64, 32, 8, 4, 2, and 1, which in total equals 111. Going to our ASCII chart, uh, 111, uh, stupid thing, get out of there. 111 equals a lowercase o. Oh, holy crap, look at that. That's really sweet. And coming down, now we've got our upside down bit pattern, but it functions the exact same way. 64, 32, and 2 equals, in total summed together, 98. Now 98, go right to it, 98 right there in decimal equals an ASCII lowercase b. I think you're getting what's happening here. Now our next byte, again equals O, and I've kind of found this interesting, how this pattern equals uh, this pattern on its side, which was our first O. And so, you know, the same thing here, 64, 32, 8, 4, 2, 1 equals 111, which equals the ASCII O. And so... Continuing on, this is the lower one going sideways. So 64, 32, 8, 4, and 1 equals 109. ASCII that on 109 equals the lowercase m. So we've actually got robo m so far. Pretty cool. Now, why am I going through each one of these? Well, because, you know, I want to really drive home the point of how this whole thing works. I mean, I, it's pretty cool. It's just awful to figure out. Anyways, uh, this byte here, 64, 32, and 1 equals 97, which is an ASCII lowercase a. 64, 32, 16, and 4 is 116 summed together, which is an ASCII t. ASCII t is 116 right there. Very cool. And let's see, coming across the top again, 64, 32, 8, 1 is 105, which is lowercase i. 64, 32, 2, and 1 is 100, or is 99, which equals lowercase c. And then our, finally, our last one is 64, 32, 16, 2, and 1, which is uh, 115, which is a lowercase s right there. Very cool. And then finally, our last piece here is the, is the empty 4 bits and uh, and an end thing, I forget what you would call that, the encoding chunk, whatever. That's really to kind of offset the four bits that were used here. Uh, I'm sure if this thing were longer, like if I had more in here, it might take up some more in the uh, error correction, just maybe less. And the encoding would then shift from here, you would have a four, uh, sorry, a, uh, an eight bit section here, and then it would come up and wherever uh, it would end, you would have, say, another four uh, oh, man, 8-bit chunk here and say this guy was your end of end of uh, string, if you will. And then your error correction would start right here. So, there we are. That is decoding a QR code by hand. So, you can have fun with that, decoding it by hand just because you wanted to learn how, 
or you can make the next awesome program and make tons of money just after you make tons of money remember your old power rule of max and come watch this videos a whole bunch of times so I can get a whole bunch of quarters of pennies anyways have fun with that